Universal Man. Everyone loves and hates Universal Man. I'm trying to make an attractive teenage girl. And the problem is, <laughs> this she looks like a jelly bean. Well, I'm thinking, what would happen was we built a Universal Man to make all the men. And we took the man and shaped it into a woman. The scope of the film is gigantic. We were trying to figure out what, what can we do with it. We have all these crowds to fill, we have all these secondary characters, we're running out of time and money. We couldn't build each of them individually, okay? Clearly, you know, you've got hundreds at least of miscellaneous people. You can't build an individual model, but you still have to people the world. Our approach was to try and make kind of generic guy that could then turn into you know, all the faces in the supporting cast. Just Universal Man is all over the place. So, for example, the principal and Bernie are the same model. All the people in the stands are the same model. All the kids at the racetrack are Universal Men. But the Underminer, he started from Universal Man. We've taken him all the way. That's amazing. Way away from a normal proportion person at this point. So, I'm surprised it worked at all. There's cops, you know, bystanders, muggers, victims, miscellaneous supers, you name it. Oh, don't worry, you'll never see him up close. And then suddenly Bernie, who's a background character or a miscellaneous character, he's built from Universal Man. He's full frame, you know, he's like right in camera filling the frame. Oh, yeah, except for Bernie and those cops and that mugger. After I haven't finished this film, I, I believe completely in my bones there's no such thing as a background character.